you doing today? Good, how are you? Good. Good. Doing well. Doing real well. How far have uh, Hudson and Mayfield come over the last few weeks? Well, over the summer, they've come a long way. So, uh, wasn't sure, you know, with Jalen, how the summer would affect him going through summer bridge. And, you know, freshman, you never know. But he's really come on and uh, works every day with the twos and gets some work with the ones every day. So, he's, his progress is great. James Hudson played in the game and played well in the game when he was in. And uh, he's made a lot of progress, too. So, his transition from D-line to O-line has been good for him and like where he's headed, like the trajectory he's on. So uh, feel like we're starting to develop some depth there that could roll into more and more playing time as they deserve it. So. And how far along is Jalen just in terms of you know, progress? Is he ahead of schedule compared to regular freshmen? Yes, I'd say he's ahead of schedule. Physically, mentally, both he's ahead of what would be a normal trajectory for a freshman that starts in June. So uh, really like where he's coming. Uh -huh. What's your assessment of the two tackle positions, uh, the starting tackle positions through the two weeks? Uh, much better week two than week one, but uh, work in progress. Still, uh, you know, John Runyon's first two starts as an offensive tackle. And uh, he's played solid, you know, and uh, continues to grow there. And uh, I think we've improved. Uh, Jawan Bushel Beatty has improved, and I think he played better as well. So I think uh, still want him to push and continue to grow and develop. We're pushing him hard. Yesterday they had good practice. I thought we got a lot better yesterday. And uh, they're very coachable guys. So Is it a different kind of challenge having to go up against a team like Notre Dame and having the, you know, the really talented ends that they had compared to like easing into the season and anything like that? Well, I think, you know, that was a big game, marquee matchup with a very talented team. So, yeah, it was, uh, you know, a challenge. So, yeah, you know, anybody wants to play somebody that maybe isn't quite that talented in the opener, but that isn't the schedule we have. We have to be ready to play those guys, and, uh, you know, it is what it is. You just take them one, th one at a time. It really isn't about them. It's about us. It's about how we prepare. It's about what we do. It's about how we practice. It's always about us. It's not about them. You don't change what you do during the week or how you practice based on who you're playing. You prepare the same way every time and make it about you and getting better and learning what you're supposed to do and doing it with the intensity you need. And so we focus more on that. How quickly has James made that transition defense to offense? I think uh, his growth over the summer and then this fall has been tremendous because he's fully invested now as an offensive lineman. You know, in the spring, I think he was putting his toe in the water to see what he thought, and he gave us a good effort, and he showed some talent. And there were times, though, that it was frustrating for him because it was just so new, and you go against our defensive ends every day. That's challenging. And I think he's way beyond that. I, feel, I think he's gaining a lot of confidence in himself, confidence in his ability to do the job, confidence in knowing what to do when he goes out there. Is he physically there? I mean, could he? I mean, we obviously saw him on Saturday, but do you think it, is it just still a matter of grasping the playbook a little bit more? Well, yeah. I mean, you know, when you talk about, you know, jogging out there to play against, you know, Notre Dame in the opening mm -hmm. game and you've never played a snap in a college football game at tackle and that environment, that's just a bit overwhelming for anybody. But, uh, you know, he didn't really play in that game. But in, this, in the last game he did play, and when he went in, he didn't look like he was overwhelmed emotionally or mentally. He looked very comfortable. He looked like he knew what he was supposed to do and did it well. So we need to give him a bigger sample size this week, if we can, and get him in there. And the more he earns that right in practice, because I base it on how you practice, not okay, he played good against Western. If he practices poorly this week, he probably won't play. If he practices well this week, he might play more. You know, so uh, and, and his practice starting. yesterday was good. Yeah, and that, and that goes for the starting the guys who started, right? I mean, absolutely. Mm -hmm. How much do you balance it between week one and week two? The staying consistent and you know some of this wasn't good enough. Oh, yeah. That the most growth in a football team in my 34 years of experience is between week one and week two. When they finally play someone other than their own team, when they finally have to learn to adjust in a game, when they finally have to 
go out and play and the coaches aren't around them anymore, then you learn a lot about, ooh, all those things coach talks about, they are really important. Boy, they do matter. I really better pay attention. And then they see themselves on film against someone else. That's when they grow the most. And I thought our growth was great from week one to week two as a unit. And I think we were much more consistent and productive. And then I hope to see that again, because I still think we have room to make that bump again. Where did you, where did you see the growth at from week one to week two? Uh, just consistency of assignments, consistency in uh, execution, just in the overall productivity, you know, just all areas. I thought they communicated better. I think you don't realize how well you need to communicate up front until you actually go in a game and it's loud and there's a lot of people and you realize like, hmm, you know, and one of the big things for those guys is to all be on the same page. And so just like yesterday was the best I've ever seen us communicate at practice in the spring, in the summer, and in the first two game preps, because now the, it, it totally, they get why. Whatever the left tackle is doing has to be tied to what everybody else is doing or it won't work. And the, whatever the center, and they all have to be tied together and the tight ends have to be attached to that and the fullbacks do. And so now they all get it, that if one guy in that chain doesn't know what's going on and they don't communicate effectively, then you have a problem. Jim said Bredesen had the best, he was the best of the offensive linemen last week. Where is Michael Wenyu? Mike's improved a lot. I, I thought, uh, He's a talented guy, and, uh, you know, I, I like where he's progressed, you know, and he has a ton of talent. So he, he made a lot of progress because he can do every job that you need to do. I mean, he has a high ceiling. You know, we just keep pushing him, and he's gaining confidence in that. Go ahead. As a center, how important is Caesar when it comes to communication? Uh, he's very important. I mean, we put a heavy burden on him to make a lot of communication calls. Now, some of the other things that go on are just echoing those out to each other and sharing the knowledge. But he has to understand. He came in today between classes and met with me for 45 minutes, and we went through a whole series of plays for this game about what he's supposed to do pre-snap to make sure we get everybody on the same page. And uh, so he's very interested in growing there, too. So like I said, He's between class 10 and 11. He had a free hour. He's in here on his own. He comes in and he says, Coach, can we meet and go over something for 30 minutes? And boom. You know what I mean? So that's the kind of kid he is, but it's critical. I mean, what he does up there is the quarterback of that group. And in your mind, he's handling these added responsibilities better? Or oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, and he's still, he has a high ceiling, too. I mean, none of these guys have reached their ceiling. Bredesen can get a lot better. Caesar can get a lot better. They're pretty good, but they can continue to grow with understanding and consistency and just we're playing together. Because, I mean, people don't realize, I mean, they do, but there's an assumption that Caesar's a veteran. I mean, he started his first game at center in Division One football against Notre Dame. Like, that's, like, first game. Not like he started somewhere else and transferred in or started last year. He's never played that position and done what he did. And now he's done it twice. So he was better the second time than the first time, and I bet you he'll be better the third time than he was the second. So, you know, you got it to process. You know, that's so what I said. We're a work in progress. That's going like this because as long as you can see it in the meetings, you can see how they practice, you can see they're buying in and they like getting better and they like – the confidence and the mojo. I mean, because we ran the ball pretty effectively in that game, and that's a credit to just, you know, their preparation, and they played hard, and, uh, you know, they're practicing like they want to be better this week, and, and I think they will be. So two weeks in, are you pleased with the progress the line has shown? I remember it's absolutely. you said you wanted, you know, this line could be a middle-of-the-road Big Ten line. Yeah, absolutely pleased with where we're at right now. And then we just got to keep going. If we don't grow any more from here, then I would be disappointed moving forward. But I think they all see the where we can. But when you watch practice and you're out there and you feel what's going on and you listen, there's a lot of things where other position coaches are saying, man, that's pretty good. Listen to them up there talking. They're, they're really working together. And then the, the physicality of how they practice, because we're really pushing for that too is practice hard on Tuesday, practice hard on Wednesday, then 
recover on Thursday and Friday and then go get it Saturday. So we're really trying to develop that culture. Because the only way you really get good up front is practice at a high tempo. You don't get better as an old lineman doing walkthroughs or going in shorts and t-shirts. That doesn't, I mean, all of us can do that in shorts and t-shirts. I mean, they have to put shoulder pads and helmets on. They have to put knee braces on. They have to tape their hands up and they have to go to work and they have to do that three times a week, once on Saturday and twice during the week for them to really become a machine. And they're learning to do that. How do you how do you balance the improvements that you saw on the field while still knowing you know Western Michigan isn't exactly the team that, that Notre Dame is? Is it really just kind of the, what you've seen in practice and what you've seen that way? Yeah, there are just certain things that you watch and you see if things that a guy didn't do well the week before, did he do it better in this game? His footwork, his pad level, his hand position, <laughs> his communication, his second effort, his finish. You just watch for those things, and every guy has different. What John Runyon needs to work on is not what Mike Iwano needs to work on, is not what Caesar needs to work on, is not what Juwan Beatty needs to work on. So they all have something different. And those are the things that are independent and of you, Yeah, so you watch and say, did Juwan get better at the three things that we said you got to improve at these? Did Mike get better? Did Ben get better? Did they? And you, you look at that, and you evaluate that, and... For the most part, most of those areas, they all took a step. And you, like I said, it's not about who we're playing, it's about us. Because the standard is going to be the same regardless of the opponent. How have you handled the transition on this staff now that you're into the season? And you've coached a lot of places, so mm -hmm. how long does it take you to really feel comfortable and, and be yourself? Uh, I, with Coach Harbaugh and the guys on this staff, great guys on this staff, great a lot. A lot of football knowledge it's been easy it's been very easy and to express yourself it's been easy to be who you you are they want me to be that they don't want me to be something else they don't want me to change they just want me to be who I am and I learn who they are and then what do we need you know and if I think I have some something to add to a situation or a play or a concept or somewhere we're doing it because everybody has that. I mean, Jim McElwain will come to me with a run. I'll go to Jim with a pass. I'll talk to Pep about this. Pep will talk to me about that. It's all a collaborative effort, trying to just put the best product on the field. So, uh, but that's been very comfortable with uh, the way our offensive staff and just our staff in general is. I mean, Don Brown comes into my office and says, if you were gonna go against this blitz, how would you block it? Would this blitz be better or that blitz be better? We, we do that all the time. You know what I mean? Like, hey, how would we, it's, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's all, how do we get the best that we can out of these kids? And then how do we do the best job preparing them as coaches? I mean, the things I'm pleased about with the offensive line, we don't have a holding call in two games. I know I just jumped this. <laughs> we have one illegal procedure penalty in two games. All right. And we really, I mean, we have, you know, four sacks, but two of them really aren't on the O-line. There would be considered other issues. So, I mean, in general, are those things improvement? To me, That I would say that those things are pretty good, that, you know, you played the, the number of plays you played. I mean, if you look at the numbers of certain things that we're doing, pretty good. So... Wait. When you say work in progress, I think you mean individually, each guy's work in progress, but does it also mean you're starting five as a work in I mean, that you could bring different guys? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you're, you, your, your job is yours for the start of that game. If you aren't playing well in the game and somebody else is close, we'll make a move in the game. If after the game we realize that you underperformed and somebody else is passing you up or even with you, then we'll move on. Yeah, I mean, it's not like that's the starting five for the season, you know? So it's based on, again, performance in games, performance in practice, and who's the most consistent. So uh, anything could happen moving forward, but I think the thing is, is that the guys who are the next guys in in a lot of positions are young mm -hmm. and just bring them along at the right pace. You know, you put a young guy in there before he's ready, you can ruin him and you can really set him back. You okay. bring him along and you know, give it to them at the pace they can handle, then you got something for a long time. Because you talked about chemistry and consistency on offensive line. I mean, mm -hmm. how long do you flirt with that that line of bringing, you know, maybe bringing new guys in? You want to get to a starting five at some 
point, I would imagine. I mean, it's, it's right, but I mean, the ones who don't start or the next guys in, they rotate in with the first yeah. group. Jalen Mayfield's in the first group every day at practice, twenty-five percent of the time. So if he jogs into the first group in a game, it's not going to be like, who's this? Mm -hmm. They see him every day in there. And James Hudson, they see in there every day. And Steve Spinellis, they see in there. We roll in guys that we think are the next guys in at positions all through practice with the ones. So it's not like no, they're looking around going, I haven't played next to this guy. They've played next to that guy from August 2nd till today in terms of being in the picture there. Does, Does that make he, sense? Is Spinellis always at center or is he comes in a guard? He plays center and guard both in practice. You mentioned that, that Jalen Mayfield spends about 25% of his time with the with the ones. Is that about where James Hudson is as well? Yeah, James might be a little bit more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I mean, they have a we, we have a set rotation that we figure out how much we want to give them with the ones and how much we want to give them with the twos so that we're giving them plenty of work to get them ready. And you were at Ohio State with Urban and that staff. Do you have any comment on that situation or anything that happened? Now I'm here to talk about the University of Michigan and us getting ready for uh, – this game, and uh, I have no comment about that. Mm -hmm. Were you, uh, did Ohio State reach out to you during this investigation? Uh, no. All right, guys. Thanks, Coach.